If you've been studying the Qt documentation all or you watch any other videos, you'll hear people talk about the item QML type. And it's this elusive thing. And it says it's a basic visual type. And you dive into the documentation and it gets very confusing very quick because it says the item type is a basic type for all visual items. However, the item object has no visual appearance. Huh? What does that really mean? Why does this thing even exist? I mean, it can it get any more confusing? Okay. So to break this down, if you think of this in terms of Qt, let's think about the Qt libraries, the Qt core, for example. Q object is one of the most useless objects, but it's the base class of everything. You can't really do a whole lot with just plain old Q object. However, Q object is the base class for everything. And item is the QML version of the Q object. It's the base type here. And if you look at it, you see why. It defines anchors, it defines analyzing, children, uh, the children rectangle, clipping, data, on and on and on and on. So all these cool things that we've been playing from, X, Y, and Z, all come from this item class. And their example here actually really sums it up. They have an item and then images in it. So really what this is meant to be is a container, if you will, or a parent for other objects. It's not really meant to be a self-contained object. Let's go ahead and demonstrate what I mean here. So we're going to say QML beginners, and this is 4.1. I'm just going to leave all the defaults there. And we're going to make the most useless application on the planet. But first, I'm going to put in some notes. Non-visual item class. I have to say non-visual because somebody will download this code and go, well, nothing was displayed. And then I have to stop and say, hey, watch the video. So we're going to make the item here. And we're going to go down here. And you see how it just has a template of ID name. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can go ahead and set an anchor if we even wanted to. And let's actually give it a width and a height. Let's try giving it a color. Oh, no, there's no color. There's color animations and columns, but we can't really do that. Huh. All right, so let's save and run, see what this looks like. Well, there's nothing there, but actually there is. It's just invisible because we can't set a visual appearance for this. But what we can do is we can do something like this. We can say rectangle, whoopsie. Got a little in my head myself there. So rectangle, set the color of this thing to red. And let's drop an anchor here. We're going to say anchors fill, and we want to fill the parent. So what this is going to do is it's going to take this rectangle and say, hey, look at your parent, this guy, and fill that thing. It's going to be 100 by 100 centered in its parent, which is the window. See? Ta-da! The power of the item component doesn't really come into play until you get a little bit more advanced in QML. And that's why it's one of the most misunderstood terms because they push this on you early because it is the base for all visual types, but it itself is non-visual and it makes no sense why this thing even exists. It exists solely so that you can make your own components and you can say, I want to define my own custom object. What's up, everybody? This is Brian. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of a larger series out on Udemy.com called QML for Beginners. The QML for Beginners course assumes you know absolutely zero QML. You're just starting off, and it's designed specifically for Qt5. I will re-record the entire series when Qt6 comes out, and just know that it's over 100 videos and 13 and a half hours of video on demand. I'll put a link below so you can get a highly discounted rate. And before you dive in, just understand it covers a lot more than what I can put into this list. Everything from what's QML to animations to C++, integration, JavaScript, and on and on and on. But one of the requirements up front is you have to know Qt Core. You should have some C++ under your belt and be very familiar with Qt 5. In case you have none of that, I do have some courses for Qt Core beginners, intermediate and advanced out on Udemy as well. Hope to see you there.